So let's take a look at separable equations. So for these first set of problems, let's go ahead and solve the differential equation. So for number one, we have dy dx equals y over x. Now the very first step to solve the differential equation is to separate variables so that we have y, all y variables on one side and all x variables on another side. So the very first thing I'll do here is actually cross multiply. So we get x times dy equals y times dx. Now remember, we have to get the same variables on each side. So in this case, what I would do is I would divide over the x, and then I would divide over the y at the left side of the equation. So then we would get dy over y equals dx over x. Now after you have separated the variables, the next step is to integrate both sides of the equation. So we have the integral of dy over y equals the integral of dx over x. Now I can actually go ahead and rewrite this so that the integral looks more familiar. So I can rewrite it as the integral of 1 over y times dy equals, on the right side, the integral of 1 over x times dx. So obviously the integral of 1 over y is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of y. That's going to equal the integral of 1 over x dx. Once again, that's natural log absolute value of x. Now because we integrated, we do have to add the plus c. But the good thing here is we only need to add plus c to one side of the equation. And it's better to add the plus c on the side of the equation that has the x variable. So in this case, we have ln absolute value of y equals ln absolute value of x, and then plus c. Now, solving the differential equation basically means given dy dx, we have to solve for y. So all we're going to do here is isolate y and find what y equals. Now, in this case, in order to isolate y, I'm going to have to e both sides. So we have e to the ln y equals e to the ln x plus c. Now, in this case, e and ln will cancel. So we just get the absolute value of y equals, we have e to the ln x or e to the ln absolute value of x. And because there's a plus here separating both of these exponents, I can separate out into e to the ln x times e to the c. Now, e raised to the power of a constant is just going to be another constant. So we can actually replace that with just c itself. And I can bring that up front here. So then I can rewrite it as the absolute value of y equals c times e to the ln x, or ln absolute value of x. So to repeat what I just said, you can always replace e to the c with just c, because once again, e to the c is just a constant. Now simplifying the function here, we have e to the ln, which will cancel. And so what we're left with is the absolute value of y equals c times the absolute value of x. And the last step, we can just get rid of the absolute values on both sides. So we have y equals the constant c times x. And that is going to be the solution to the differential equation. Now for number two, we have x squared plus one times y prime equals x times y. Now don't let y prime confuse you because remember that y prime is the same thing as dy dx. So I'm going to go ahead and replace y prime with dy dx. And then I can go ahead and separate out the variables. Once again, that's the very first step. So the first thing I would do is actually go ahead and divide over the y to the left side and then divide over x squared plus one to the right side. So what we get is dy over dx divided by y, which is the same thing as multiplying by one over y, the reciprocal, that's gonna equal. And then we have x over x squared plus one. So now finally what I need to do is multiply over the dx to the right hand side of the equation. So then we get one over y times dy equals x over x squared plus one times dx. So now we can go ahead and integrate both sides since we have separated the variables. Now similar to the previous problem, the integral of one over y dy is ln of the absolute value of y. And then we have equals the integral of x over x squared plus one dx. Now in this case, we have to use u substitution. So if u equals x squared plus one, then du equals the derivative of x squared plus one, which is two x dx. And then dx, if I isolate, equals du over two x. If I go ahead and sub in everything back into the integral, we have the integral of x over u times dx, which is equal to du over 2x. Notice the x's will cancel. A 1 half can come outside the integral as a constant. So we have 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du. So then we have 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du. It's just going to be natural log absolute value of u. And then we can go ahead and replace back our u, which is obviously x squared plus 1. So we have 1 half natural log absolute value of x squared plus 1. So I can go ahead and put that over here, where we have, once again, the integral of 1 over y dy is ln absolute value of y. 
that's going to equal the integral of x over x squared plus 1 dx, which we have just found to be 1 half the natural log absolute value of x squared plus 1. Because we integrated both sides, we can go ahead and add the plus c. Once again, we'll add it on the side that has the x variable, so on the right side. And then we can go ahead and solve for y. So in this case, in order to get rid of the natural logs and isolate y, I'll have to e both sides. Now e to the ln will cancel, so we have the absolute value of y equals, now because we have a plus sign here separating the two exponents, half ln x squared plus 1, and then c, we can go ahead and separate it into e to the 1 half ln absolute value of x squared plus 1, and then times e to the c. Now once again, e to the c is just a constant, we can replace that with just c. So now I can go ahead and rewrite it as the absolute value of y equals c times e to the 1 half times the natural log absolute value of x squared plus 1. Now using properties of logs, we can actually bring what's in front of the log, the constant 1 half, up top as an exponent. So I'll rewrite it as the absolute value of y equals c times e to the natural log absolute value of x squared plus 1, that entire thing to the 1 half power. So now I can rewrite this as the absolute value of y equals c times e to the ln, and then we have the square root of the absolute value of x squared plus 1. Now notice e to the ln will cancel, so what we're left with is the absolute value of y equals c times the square root of the absolute value of x squared plus 1. And finally we can just get rid of the absolute value on both sides. So we have y equals c the constant times the square root of x squared plus 1. That's going to be the solution. Now for this next set of problems, we have to find the solution of the differential equation that satisfies the given initial condition. So for number one, we have dy dx equals y squared plus one, and the initial condition is that y of one equals zero, and we'll come back to that later. The very first couple steps are the exact same. So once again, we're gonna separate our variables here. So the first thing I would do is just switch the places of dx and y squared plus one. So we have dy over y squared plus one equals dx. And then I can rewrite this as one over y squared plus one, and then times dy, that equals dx. Because we have the variable separated, let's go ahead and integrate both sides. Now the integral of one over y squared plus one dy, remember that's just gonna be inverse tangent of y. That's gonna equal the integral of dx, that's just gonna be x. Now that we have integrated, we can add the plus c. Now if I go ahead and isolate y, in order to get rid of this inverse tangent, I just have to tangent both sides. So we get y equals tangent of x plus c. Now the next step here is obviously to find the differential equation that satisfies the initial condition, which in this case is y of 1 equals 0. So all we're doing with this extra step is finding what the actual value of c is. So in this case y of 1 equals 0, and all that means is that when we plug in 1 for x, our output y is equal to 0. So in this case, all we have to do is isolate c and find what that equals when we plug in x or 1 for x and then 0 for y. Now we can use either equation because both of these are equal to each other, but in this case it's easier to use the inverse tangent one. So we have inverse tangent of y, once again y is 0, so inverse tangent of 0 equals x, which once again is 1 plus c. Now inverse tangent of 0, what do we take the tangent of to get 0? Well we just take tangent of 0 to get 0. So 0 equals 1 plus c, so then isolating c, c equals negative 1. So all we have to do is replace negative 1 for c, and then we get our solution. So y equals tangent of x plus negative 1, or x minus 1. And that is going to be the exact solution to the differential equation given the initial condition. So now for number 2, we have du dt equals 2t plus c can square to t over 2u, and the initial condition is u of 0 equals negative 5. This works the exact same way as dy dx, but instead we have du dt. So u kind of acts as the y variable, and t kind of acts as the x variable in this case. So once again, same process here, I'm going to separate variables. So what I'm going to do here is multiply 2u to the left-hand side of the equation, and multiply dt to the right-hand side. So what we get is 2u du equals 2t plus secant squared of t, and then times dt. Once again, we've separated the variables. Let's go ahead and integrate both sides. The integral of 2u du is going to be u squared. That's going to equal the integral of 2t plus secant squared of t. Now the integral of 2t is t squared plus the integral of secant squared of t, which is going to be tangent of t. 
and then we have to add the plus C. Now if I go ahead and isolate U, U is going to equal plus or minus the square root of T squared plus tangent of T and then plus C. So now we have to find what the actual value of C is. So going back up here to the initial condition, U of 0 equals negative 5. This means when we plug in 0 for T, we get an output of negative 5, or in other words, our U is going to be equal to negative 5. So let's go ahead and sub in these values. So in this case, I'll just sub it into this top equation. Once again, both of these equations are the same. So we have u squared, or in other words, negative 5 squared, which is 25, equals t squared, which in other words is 0 squared. That's going to be 0 plus tangent of 0. Tangent of 0 is 0, and then plus c. So then we get c equals 25. So I can go ahead and sub in the value for c. So we get u equals plus or minus the square root of t squared plus tangent of t and then plus c, which once again is 25. So plus 25. Now be careful here. Because we have plus or minus a square root, we actually need to test both the positive version of the square root and the negative version of the square root and see if both of those are real solutions to the differential equation. So I'm going to go ahead and write out both the positive and negative versions. So u equals positive square root of t squared plus tangent of t plus 25, and also u equals the negative version of the square root. So negative square root of, once again, t squared plus tangent of t plus 25. So now let's go ahead and sub in our values to see if both are solutions or to test the solution. So once again, u is negative 5. So negative 5 equals the square root of the t squared. So 0 squared is 0, once again, plus tangent of 0, which is 0, and then plus 25. So here we get negative 5 equals the square root of 25, which is 5. So realize that negative 5 does not equal 5. So we say that the positive version of the square root is not a solution. So let's go ahead and test out the negative version. In this case, we have negative 5, which is once again is u, equals negative 1 times the square root of 0 squared plus tangent of 0, which is 0, plus 25. Once again, that's going to be 25. So here we get negative 5 equals negative 5. So in this case, the negative version is a solution. So that is going to be the exact solution to the differential equation.